Hey everyone, welcome to this video in the Katie Explains series. Today we're going to be talking about bug hunting using CVEs. And yes, we are going to talk about the big IP vulnerability, but more specifically how people actually use CVEs to find zero days and exploit them and use them in bug hunting. You know, how do people know what targets use um, big IP? How did people know um, where the vulnerability was? All of this kind of um, practice that goes into really finding those bugs before anybody else can get there. And again, this video very kindly sponsored by Integrity. So in case you missed it and some of the other videos, Integrity has very kindly offered to sponsor some videos on my channel. And if you're not aware of them, they're a bug bounty platform like HackerOne, like BugCrowd. But while those platforms focus on kind of global customers, Integrity is a lot smaller. It focuses on European customers. They have some different programs. Um, but actually, because they're a smaller platform, they have some really great, um, uh, like active on social media, really interacting with hackers. They're always interacting with the community, always trying to do right by their community. And actually considering that they have like a lot smaller, uh, level of hackers, actually they have some really cool programs that people aren't hacking on. Um, and if you're not quite ready to make the jump into hacking real targets, they often run XSS challenges where you can win a copy of Burp Suite Professional. But you know me, I'm all about community focus and actually they're really giving back to the community. Not just investing in me, but investing in other creators, sponsoring newsletters. And actually they let me create the content I want to make without pushing me to make focused content. Um, and I really don't take having an advertiser lightly on the channel. So I really do like integrity and I think they do amazing things for the bug bounty community. And I'm so happy that people have been signing up and that for some of you found your first bug, you've got some bounties on integrity and um, people are sharing tips about what programs are really great on integrity. And I love that. So if you're not already a member, you can sign up on the link on screen, go.integrity.com forward slash Katie, uh, or there's a direct link in the description. So thank you very much for sponsoring the video. Let's talk about CVEs. So the question really is, what is a CVE? You might have seen this on Twitter, especially this week. Um, but what is it? Now, a CVE is a known vulnerability in a piece of software. Now, unlike in bug bounty hunting, where we are hunting kind of on an end product, really, when you're looking at CVEs, you're looking at things that those end products use. It's software used by many organizations. Think about how big finding a vulnerability in Office would be right? Every company uses Office, every company uses Word, or a development framework like, you know, Go, PHP, WordPress. Uh, and that means a single bug can exist in many different organizations. And they're public. Um, and you can read them. So kind of how does this process work? Um, when you report a finding, you can request a CVE number. Some organizations will assign you one, like think Microsoft, if you report a bug to Microsoft, like in Office, they're going to assign you a CVE um, themselves, but actually something like HackerOne, um, they are able to assign these numbers and uh, they'll work with researchers to manage a CVE report. Um, and they have this like a uh, little uh, help section where they discuss kind of the process, but essentially uh, you request one and hacker one will take you through the process. Um, so how can you read CVEs? Now, MITRE, the people who run this list, provide a handy search. <laughs> you just look at the list and you can search and you can download it. Um, here I've done a search for WordPress and you can see all of the CVEs. Now the CVE number is CVE, then the year it was uh, published and then a number which just corresponds to which number on the list it is. So anything with the number 2020 is a vulnerability found in 2020. Um, and actually, if you look at my RC video, I talk about this in way more depth about CV numbers and how it's specifically used to find uh, remote code executions. And there's also a Twitter feed as well. If you go to CVE new, it will actually publish every CVE when it gets announced. So the question is, what do these actually look like? Uh, and here's one. So this is a Laravel bug, um, CVE 2020-13909. And we have a description. We have some references. 
we have a CNA, so that's the per the people who have actually assigned the number here. Um, the yeah, creation date and some other uh, legacy information. Now, what do we actually get on top of that? Well, we get a severity based on C CVSS, and this one is a critical bug. And the references show blacklist of certain variable names while fixing it. But actually, the only technical details we have is just this one line. CVEs are really, really, really vague. And this is why you have to reverse engineer them. Now, introducing CVE 2020-5902, um, aka the meme of this week. Now, what is this CVE? Um, so it's an RCE, remote code execution, which means that you can run code on another machine via the internet in uh, F5's big IP. Um, and it's basically used for traffic management. It's a very simple exploit, which is why it's got quite a lot of publicity. I'm not really going to be talking about this particular vulnerability, though. I'm not going to be talking about how it works, um, but instead I'm going to be talking about kind of how it evolved and how people actually use it in bug hunting. Um, and in case you didn't know, this is actually the two payloads that you can send. The first one is a um, RCE and the second one is an arbitrary file read. Um, and this is the kind of, you send this your payload. Uh, and as you can see, actually when this was first released and when it was shown on Twitter, uh, it actually didn't get a lot of attention. Now, let's talk about what it's like to hunt for this vulnerability. Uh, so this was the 1st of July. And here we have our description and impact. And there's a few other details on this page. So then on the 4th of July, uh, we get this Twitter feed from someone who works at NCC, which is a cybersecurity group. Um, and they're reporting the first exploit of um, the vulnerability. And here we can see a comment that says, the exploit we've seen is very simple. We saw the payload in the other slide. Um, and some other information about the person exploiting it. And then we get a tweet from Europa which says, when you reverse engineer a zero day with your team, but you've got no targets, uh, which was then linked to the previous uh, tweet about the first exploitation. So this is when Disturbance had then uh, reverse engineered this bug. And by the next day, uh, July 5th, we can see that there's already memes about it. So we can see this one, uh, of the Twitter feed just flooding with the CVE. So let's look at this on like a timeline. So on Wednesday, it was disclosed on the website. On Saturday, it was reverse engineered. So it only took three days for it to be reverse engineered. Between Saturday and Sunday, you have memes. And actually, it only took a day from it being reverse engineered to be having memes on Twitter. And then we see on Monday and Tuesday, we see a burp add-on being um, added. We see it being added to Metasploit. So two to three days to be added to popular uh, scanning tools. And then we saw that being used in kind of actual black hat. You can see uh, gray traffic, which sort of discusses this in more detail. And then on Saturday, you have me making a video <laughs> about the CVE. So here's the question. Why did it need to be reverse engineered? So as we sort of discussed above and the kind of previously, um, CVs are really not very detailed. They're really focused on informing users of a vulnerability, adding patch notes to of like what's being patched and how, um, and explaining how to mitigate it. They're really focused on people who use that software and basically making them afraid of, of um, it being exploited. There's no details really on how it's exploited. And that's for obvious reasons, because anyone who hasn't patched it is obviously vulnerable. So this is really the first stage is reverse engineering the exploitation of the bug. Now, the next problem is really finding targets. Now, here we have Europa's tweet, and it's probably one of the most challenging parts of using CVEs in this way to do bug hunting. 
How do you know it's vulnerable? How do you know if they have a bug bounty program? And the answer to both of those is the same. It's data. Now, what kind of data do we have access to? Well, the first thing we have is bounty targets data. Now, this is a GitHub repo, which is literally a list of full list of domains uh, without wildcards, with which are in HackerOne and bug, bound, uh, bug Crowd's public programs. It doesn't cover private programs. It covers a lot, though. Um, and one approach is to crawl this with a tool such as Tomnonon's Meg. You could send it a bunch of different payloads and just see what comes out at the end. So there's one thing, one way of doing it. You could just spam the entire uh, list of bug crowd or hacker one but that doesn't necessarily tell you what technology something's using you still have to fuzz to find those endpoints now that's when we get shodan now if you're not sure what shodan is it's this search engine for the internet now i don't mean as in is able to be used by the internet i mean works with the internet <laughs> um it allows you really to search for header like in headers of uh web websites for keywords so in this case i've searched for wordpress and we can see we're getting x redirect by um and you can then view information like ssl certificates and export the results it's really 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 powerful but you need to know what you're looking for um and it costs money but has, if you're a student you can get free plans for academic use now so how do you actually use that though well you want to look for like a fingerprint that tells you what technology something's looking for so here we want to find instances of big ip now if we've done some research on big ip maybe we've deployed it locally we can say that the title will look like big ip redirect so from that, we can then craft our search query. We can say, well, the title is going to contain big IP redirect. So we need to be looking for that string as an HTTP title. And then we put that into Shodan. And as you can see here, here are the results. You know, we're getting 3000 results from the US, uh, 1000 results from China. But we don't really, we can't just start exploiting them, right? We don't know if they have bug bounty programs one doing that without them having a bug bounty program is illegal and two they're not gonna pay us there's no point putting in all the work for them not to pay out at the end now there's one other thing you can do with shodan and this is pretty much exclusive to academic use um or small business subscription but that's 300 dollars a month is you can actually search for specific vulnerabilities so here is the same list but when you search for the vulnerability by the CVE, in case you didn't know, I'm a PhD student. That's my day job. Um, so I have an academic plan. And we can see here that as opposed to on the previous slide, where we have 3000 results from the US. Here we get 1000. So we already know from that big list of 3000 um, domains in the US, only half of them are actually vulnerable. They might have updated, so they're not vulnerable anymore. So you can search for specific vulnerabilities, but okay, what goes next? So if we know the bounty targets, um, we like, you know, we know that AT&T has a bug bounty program. We know that Verizon has a bug bounty program. We know that Uber has a bug bounty program, right? That's some of the biggest programs on Hacker One. We can go in here and we can then say, okay let's add another filter let's search for organization or let's find another field like let's have another filter let's search for um just at&t on the run let's find where we can see a reference to at&t in a headers for another um page so that's step one um the other thing we can do is we can export all the data now this is below an export of uh i think just a search for yahoo so if we export everything that's vulnerable to big IP, um, which we can do again with the right license, we can then compare this with our list of data, a target data list, bounty targets data, yeah, of domains. Because if we look here, we can see that we're getting 
blah 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 media router prod one media vip yahoo.com so we know that yahoo.com here is a domain and we can check it with the list and go yes yahoo.com is in scope and then we can do a match right we can say well that matches this this matches that so we can test every site uh, and see but like look okay these are the list with bug bounty programs these are also the list of everything that uses big ip then we can apply our fuzzing to it and see whether or not they've updated their uh, version of big ip so how does this kind of turn into a kind of methodology so how to bug hunt using cves before anybody else finds them first so these three easy steps these three actually quite difficult steps um, the first is to reverse engineer a CVE or copy a payload somebody else reverse engineered and put on Twitter, just like um, the big IP one. Now, if you want to be first, you probably want to do this step before anybody else. This is when you would be maybe looking at recent zero days, um, keeping on track of what CVEs are coming out and then trying to reverse engineer them. Next step is ready to get a list of potential targets. You can use Shodan and look at what technology they're using, find those fingerprints of some technologies uh, and bug bounty targets, both of which will give you a list of all the bug bounty programs and you can start looking for known targets um, or match Shodan with bug bounty targets to find which ones are actually bug bounty uh, eligible. Now, then you've got to test if they're vulnerable. So you can use a tool like Meg or FFUF um, to import the domains from Shodan and the exploit. So you can then fuzz every single domain. And that fundamentally, when you see people talking about finding these CVEs, these zero days, that is the steps they're going through. They're not doing anything like super like complex. They're reverse engineering it. They're getting a list of targets and they're testing if they're vulnerable. The difficult part there is really reverse engineering because that requires programming knowledge. It requires the ability to deploy. It requires the ability to be first before anybody else can. And it also requires you to be experienced in reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is not easy to do. Um, for some, maybe like this vulnerability is quite a simple exploit. For some, it can be quite difficult. And eventually, you know, if you're looking at the um like vulnerability and if it's a critical then yeah maybe it's worth that extra time if you're looking at like a medium it's probably not worth going through these steps so that's it thank you very much for watching i hope this was an interesting look at how people use cves and really what the bug hunting uh, methodology if you like for using cvs actually looks like and how bug hunters use cvs in their practice so thank you once again to Integrity for sponsoring this video. Um, I'm so pleased everyone's finding bugs and you're getting bounties and I love hearing about it. So if you do, if you find your first bug, maybe you just get a bounty, please do tell me about it. Um, so thank you very much for that. You can sign up with my link go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. And um, I'm really sorry this has delayed the iOS video. That will be coming next week, I promise. I'm actually just in the process of migrating to a new setup now. Um, I finally be able to invest a little bit more into the channel. So hopefully you'll see that in better quality um, and in the future, you know, especially improving my editing. So thank you for watching. I will see you all next week. Have a great week, everybody.